Welcome in to the Fun Astrology Podcast. Let's wrap up the week on TGI Friday, June 16th. Thomas Miller here. We'll get the weekend set up for you because it is going to be an eventful next couple of days in the sky over our heads. So the first thought I had here was, how has this week been compared to last week? At least in the context that we've had this big, powerful, no question about it, grand cross in the chart. So powerful that under it, a United States president for the first time was federally indicted and appeared in court. And we don't go into politics here, but just to say, if you don't think that this has not been a major significant development in our nation's history, whatever side of it you're on, the astrology is that it happened under that grand cross. So have a lot of other things that have a lot more Uranus signature than anything, which is not even part of this, thank goodness. Now, we were talking about when will this thing disappear, and I've been looking at this more in light of what we discussed yesterday of the orb factor. So how big of an orb do you want to have between this next leg, which is the North Node and Jupiter, in the square to Venus and Mars? That's the last and only remaining leg that's going to fall off. The other T-square with Pluto stays in place. So when will this be gone? Let's give it all the way through Sunday, gone by Monday. Let's make sure that that leg is far enough removed orb-wise, so I'm looking more at 6 or 7 degrees, gone. Monday. Now, today, no direct aspects, but the moon is square to Saturn. This is one of those things that this theme just keeps beating like a drum. So let's just use this lunar aspect as a microcosm of what's going on in the bigger picture. So the moon squares Saturn today at 11.20 a.m. Eastern Time. And the reason I'm so passionate about this is this process, this microcosm that we're looking at today over our heads, is so reflective of my own spiritual growth that has led me to radically be able to transform my life and rebuild it from the ground up. And let me tell you, it did not used to be like this. But the macro of what's going on here is that Saturn, Lord Karma, the planet that really just wants to help us align with our highest timeline. It really wants to help us get rid of the stuff that's in the way. So I think what it does is it comes along at first, benefically, asks us to make a change or to get rid of something, to release, to let something go that no longer serves. See, there's a slight difference between this and the other karmic blues brother, Pluto. Pluto just comes in with the wrecking ball. Bring in the construction equipment. We're taking it down. Death and rebirth. Saturn, yeah, Saturn has more of this Lord Karma but fatherly figure. Son, I want you to clean up the garage this afternoon before you go play with your friends. And you don't do it. What do you get? The fatherly figure. Or the image I mentioned a few episodes back of the little girl sitting in her father's lap in that very safe, secure place. Saturn has both sides. It's we who are stuck. But Lord Karma comes along and asks us to remove something, makes it aware or a situation that we are just stuck in and says, are you willing to release this? And we resist. We fight against it. We hold on to it tighter. Man, I was the champion. I mean, look at my astrology. I mean, of course, I was intense with all of that Scorpio stuff to hold on to the point where I think it contributed to my heart issues. So I'm screaming at you younger folks down here from the 60s saying, please deal with this now because the paybacks in your body can be reflected. But then Saturn comes back with a stronger request. It makes It amps the situation up a little bit. Now there's a buy when or there are conditions. We dig in our heels. Maybe in some situations we even shut off our spiritual practice. We go hide. And then finally, Lord Karma becomes malefic Saturn. So I'm just oozing out here from the depths of my soul and from my personal experience, learning to work with these energies in our chart and when they present themselves overhead by transits or progressions working with them pliably and amicably is the key to our highest spiritual potential. And often it results in our highest physical potential as well. It's also the direct correlation to how we can look at this chart at any given time and not be threatened by what we see. 
Now, what about tomorrow? Well, the big thing tomorrow is Saturn turns retrograde in Pisces. Hello. Why did we take that one little lunar aspect and make it the focus of this episode? Because from tomorrow until October, we're going to be in the soaking of exactly everything that I just talked about. That's retrograde. Re-examination. And now, in one way or another, for the next several months, it will apply to all of us. I hope this message resonates with you, because then on Sunday, early in the morning at 6.57 a.m., so 7 o'clock a.m., Sunday morning, the moon moves into Cancer. And now, you are truly in the soul for the next two and a half days. I love you so much. I really hope you get this message, because it is, it's, it's been the key for me and my transformation. It's been my everything of letting go of this stuff without even looking back. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back tomorrow with Ray Merriman and back here again in the captain's seat on Monday.